there's one reason for that. They've never really done anything bad. They were two family men. The only thing that ever happened with Eric Morgan that could be seen as a scandal is he drank too much in the 70s. So there isn't anything there to re like real, um, real scandal to look at. So what people are going to get when they go and see it is they're going to see the harshness of the reality of, of becoming famous, the way they did it, climbing their way up. I mean, there's this great quote in this article, which is the basis for today's discussion, in which Joan Bartholomew tell, told Cook that um, she'd never noticed her husband was becoming famous because it became so gradual. And they started off with a small TV show, moved into the big spectaculars you see repeated today. So these are men who aren't going to be ridiculed or criticised because they didn't put a foot wrong. Mm. What failed them was the British entertainment industry in the end. Hopefully they do not focus on that though and leave that sort of stuff alone and just focus on how hard he worked and how funny he was. Mm. I mean, Eric Morecambe is, um, is very famously loved the place that he came from. I mean, would it not have been better to have debuted this in his hometown? Possibly. It is possible that it would have been a really good good idea to do that. However, the, the, I see what you mean, but at the same time, I personally think that if you're going to debut a new piece that you know will most likely get a lot of of people going, oh, I'm going to go see that because this is a popular genre at the moment. You know, I really like that. I wonder why they didn't do Eric and Ernie when they did the ones about Harry H. Corbett, Frankie Howard, Tony Hancock and Kenneth Williams. Why didn't they do those guys? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. You do it at Edinburgh. If you want to make a splash nowadays in theatre with a new piece and you want it to go to the West End, you're going to debut it at, um, at Edinburgh. That's not to say that they shouldn't do it at, at Eric's hometown. They should definitely do a performance there. But whether they do or not is another matter. Mm -hmm. um, and, and talking about this biographical um, play in uh, genre in general, what are your feelings towards it? I mean, do we see now that most of these plays that are come, plays and musicals that are coming along, is it just a way of cashing in? Is it another way to, to rack up your millions when something happens? I mean, so often now you hear things um, like, oh, they're going to, of course, they'll make a musical of it, or they'll make a film. It used to be, they would always make a film of it, but now it seems to be musicals are uh, are, are more popular. When Jay Goody died, there was um, the the uh, the rumour that they were going to turn her life into a West End musical. We have Michael Jackson's Thriller Live on at the moment. Um, and we've had many um, band uh, biographical pieces on. At the moment, we have Jersey Boys um, about the Four Seasons. We had um, um, who else did we have? Well, you've got obviously the most famous one of all is Mamma Mia by ABBA. Yes, yeah, but it's not about them. At the same time, I don't think there are many out there that are, I, I understand what you're saying. It's becoming a, a situation where. Well, some of the longest running uh, musicals are biographical. Buddy Holly. Ho um, Buddy, yeah, Buddy is very popular, yes. Um, and we have many like that. Some of them have failed, some of them have gone on to be great successes. But it's now become a, a, a form of um, almost like a rite of passage for some celebrities. I don't totally agree with the idea of doing musicals that are biographical. But you must agree that there is, that is now oh, a trend. Oh, yeah, it is a trend. And the reason why it's a trend is because, um, well, because people will not get up and go and see a piece of original music being played in a theatre, an original musical. They just won't do it. The normal people who go and sit bums in seats won't go and see something, a musical, unless it's got massive amounts of money behind it, which is why so many things get transferred from Broadway. So what do you do to get the general public in England to come and see a show? Do it based around pop music. But biographical plays are nothing new. No, biographical plays are nothing new, no. And that's another thing. This is this is possibly the oldest form of 
cashing in on a celebrity is by writing a play about them. Um, Shakespeare did Shakespeare it. Shakespeare did it. Did it many times. Always about lots and lots of plays about old kings and old emperors. Uh, Anthony and Cleopatra. Um, Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar Henry, the Henry V, v Richard, III. Richard III. I mean, there's so many autobiographical, well, biographical uh, plays out there. And it is, I don't know if it's a writer passage at the moment. It, I think it's just people, for example, Jay Goody, I think people just saw it as that is a logical step at the moment. Is to but invest. why is it? Because they know how, how because of TV programmes like... Um, how to solve a, oh, um, how, like how do you solve a problem like Maria? Oh, um, or, um, um, yeah, the other finding one. Lloyd Webber's Nancy. Yeah, finding <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber's Nancy have shown that have increased ticket sales in the West End. Yeah, and other things such other factors such as the popularity of High School Musical and um, the eventual film of the musical of Hairspray has made it popular to go and see a musical now. Yeah, but all those musicals were originals. Yes, they were. But at the same time, there is an interest in going to see them. And then you find that, oh, people want to cash in on Joe Goody's life. People want to hear more about her life. So this is a cashing in exercise. Yeah, it is a cashing in exercise for, for someone like Joe Goody. But how good is this for the art scene? How good is this for theatre industry in general? That theatre is now being dictated to by the people, by by popular demand. Well, this is this is always the argument: is should theatre be for the public and their demand for what entertainment they want, or should it be pushing as art? But surely the theatre is agreeing to have these pieces put on. Of course it is. Because they know that people that they're going to make money out of them. Exactly. I mean, it would it would be stupid if they didn't put these pieces on that would make them money because. But then where does that leave our art scene? It leaves our art scene in in a situation where you are more likely to see a genuine piece of theatre that is pushing the boundaries in a smaller theatre that isn't being seen by hundreds of thousands of people nationwide because the the script won't end up on TV. It won't be toured around the UK. It will only have a limited run. But is it ethical? I mean, what do, what are we saying to the thousands of students that are coming out of drama school, thinking that there's the likelihood that they could possibly put something on, that it could move to the West End, that they could make some money out of this, achieve some fame along the way? Or are we just telling them that there's no point in them training because whatever they end up doing will be in order to make someone else money? Again... It, makes the theatre industry seem very, very fickle. It is very, very fickle. This isn't, this isn't, unfortunately, the 60s anymore, where the government was giving money for rep theatres and amateur theatre and local theatres to be open. This is now an industry where bums in seats is the main thing. It's, I mean, it's always been the main thing, but bums in seats, you have to have an X amount of... X amount of seats sold, otherwise you might you get closed within days. Yes, but if you look at the theatre going population mm. and the demographic, it's generally people who are uh, much more wealthy that can spend money to go to the theatre. I don't think many of them will be queuing up in their droves to go and see Jay Goody the Musical. No, they probably won't, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do do a Jay Goody musical and it doesn't actually reach the West End. What it does is it tours the country in the smaller theatres, in the provincial theatres, because that has happened numerous times. But there's already been a, a, a backlash from some some areas of the theatre-going population who don't like the idea of having to go and see musicals that have been put there, prioritised, by these theatres, by production companies, by people.